Uh, good afternoon, everybody. <coughs> As Noam introduced me, I'm from Computing Division. My name is uh, Jack Barocas, and I work as deploying and uh, developing learning technologies to assist face-to-face -face learning as well as building fully online courses. Actually, I wanted to start my presentation just uh, going inside to some uh, sites which we built for previous projects and ongoing projects in the framework of, of Tempus and show you how we are integrating some learning tools uh, for building online courses, some uh, learning uh, technologies. But I will rather start with uh, a PowerPoint presentation because it seems to be the bon ton today to use PowerPoint presentations and uh, as an uh, instructional designer, I cannot afford myself not using one, so last night I made a few uh, slides. Uh, actually, what I will do is in one slide, I will put all the sites that I would like to show you, the links, so it will be very easy for me to navigate to those sites. So let's start, but just before I start, I feel obliged to say a few words about my perception, uh, the way I think the role of uh, learning technologies in education and in the future education especially. Um, we cannot ignore the fact that we are in ongoing evolution, I might say even revolution in terms of uh, enga engaging uh, technology in our daily life. Um, this very rapidly changing environment is impact has impact on all of us. I mean, regardless if you are a mechanic trying to repair a car using a laptop with a diagnostic, diagnostic software, or if you are a lawyer, or if you are a secretary using a new operating system, office, or new devices in your office, and especially and if you are a researcher or a, you are educator, you need all the time to be updated to be learner. So. We are also working with computers every day. I mean, we book our uh, flight tickets using computers. We also um, make uh, or booking the hotels. We use smartphones for even getting a taxi. We have application for everything. And uh, I mean, we, we even use smartphones. They are getting smarter every day. I think my smartphone is in some means more smarter than me already today. So we have very big impact of these things in our life. And the days in which that you just finish your formal learning in high school or university and you cease to be a student, gone and uh, they are disappear. I mean, today you need to be a lifelong learner. You need to, to learn all the time. And this makes a very great demand on education. I mean, since everybody needs to learn every, all the time and they can't do this in, in sitting in classrooms, we are becoming a sort of lifelong learners. Uh, I think the future get, uh, graduating students need to have the skill and competencies of being self-learners, autodidacts, in order to survive in this very rapidly changing technology saturated environment. Well, the critical question that we need to ask now is whether the current uh, higher education system is providing to its graduate, graduating students other than knowledge, which will probably disappear in, in, a, in a while, the ability of uh, being autodidact, self-learning, and most important of all, critically uh, retrieve information and build out of this information some meaningful uh, knowledge. Uh, I think one of the important approach to deal with this question should be to introduce a controlled amount of uh, online learning, uh, online courses, even in our face-to-face -face traditional universities. Only by this way, we can make our graduate students familiar with these new technologies that they will need to use for the rest of their career, and maybe even beyond. So what, this is the, uh, the, the reason that I suggested Peter and Elena to use this kind of technology to record master classes, to record uh, some of the lectures and make them available to the students uh, just for the purpose, even not uh, knowledge, but uh, introducing them this technology which they will need to use uh, very often in the future. I have one more. Uh, slide about Bologna process, ETS, learning outcomes, and so on. But some of my colleagues already talked about it. Elena talked about it. 
So I will skip this uh, slide and I will go mainly to show you uh, how this kind of technologies, video recording, is implemented in other uh, EU projects. Actually, our department, uh, computing division, is in the last decade involved in, in dozens of uh, EU projects. Some of them are in uh, the frame of, of Leonardo da Vinci, Erasmus, FP7, and uh, now Tempus projects. For example, we can see here uh, recordings that we made. Hopefully, it will work fine. For a higher education reform experts uh, group, uh, I'm one of the higher education ex uh, experts representing Israel in this forum. And we already um, made in most of the uh, um, conferences of this uh, uh, forum, which is uh, made of, I think, 120 experts from all around Europe and countries around Europe. In these conferences, we, they, we have very, very enlightening talks about learning outcomes, ECTS, diploma supplement, Bologna process in, in large. You can go to this site and you will have, if you have any interest, you will have very impress, interesting talks that you can uh, listen. And then we have uh, other projects in FP7 like UNANO, but we have also two projects that we uh, they finished only uh, a couple of months ago, I think almost a year, in which we build courses for master degree in nanotechnologies, one of them called Leonardo da Vinci in the frame of uh, nano -L in the framework of Leonardo da Vinci, and the other one is nano skills. In one, we build courses for the master degree on nanotechnologies, and the other was for the industry to, um, to have uh, more skilled uh, workers, employees uh, to work in the industry of nanotechnologies. Then we have also a human brain project, which is a very large project. We are uh, working, we are part of the uh, education work package. It is about modeling the human brain by using computer models. And then we have, of course, CES Remo, which is uh, a parallel project to this one, in which Elena also is uh, part of the coordinating team. And now what I'm doing is disseminating other projects in this project. Probably I will do it in some other project, disseminating this project. And this cross-dissemination is very important for Trampus project as well. So we can see, for example, here, uh, this is one of the master classes, which I recorded um, in uh, Baku, right? Uh, you can see uh, the, the lecturer. I mean, um, I will a little bit go on this. It's on YouTube, but it, uh, at the end, eventually, it will be on the site of the project. What you can see is a, a recording done by a software we developed in-house, which integrates the power presentation and the video of the lecturer at the same frame. It's done uh, in real time, synchronized. I mean, at the end of at, at the end of the recording, we have one single file containing the PowerPoint presentation, the screen capture of the lecture and the video, which means we can uh, give the audience this almost the same experience of being in the classroom. He can see the video, he can see the PowerPoint presentation, and, and of course can uh, listen to the lecturer voice. And the, the last thing that I would like to show, and this is the most important, this is the EduNano project. This is the project um, initiated by our university, and we are the uh, local coordinators. Let me just uh, log in. Okay, in this project, we ha it is a national Tempus project, which means the beneficiary is Israel, and uh, uh, we have six <laughs> research universities and all the nano centers of these universities. We have a partner from the industry. Elbit is one of the largest industrial companies in Israel. And we have um, a one uh, institution uh, affiliated to the Technion, which does the survey and the analysis for this. And of course, we have three more European uh, countries taking place in this project. The aim of this project is to build fully online courses to be shared by the Israeli universities. I mean, we are going uh, to build courses each university will make uh, the best course in the field of its expertise. And these courses will be shared among the universities. We are going to plan a model, a business plan, how each university will recognize 
the accreditation, the mutual accreditation of the uh, courses. It most uh, probably will be based on ECTS. So in the framework of, of this project, we have workshops on ECTS learning outcomes. We already did two workshops in uh, Jerusalem. Uh, now I would like to show you how these uh, uh, learning materials are gathered in, in courses. For example, uh, I'm going to talk about one of the courses, which is Introduction to Surface Sciences. This course is given by Professor Shahar Richter, which was here a while ago, and now he left because he needs to teach. Uh, what we are doing now in this course, um, to begin with, this is a Moodle. The, the interface, the, the software that aggregates in the courses called Moodle, just out of curiosity, how are how many of you in your institutions are using Moodle or any other LMS for teaching, learning? Can you raise hand? Okay, one, two, three. Okay, but unfortunately, it's not the most. I hope in the near future, all the universities will use this software because this software is very efficient on monitoring the learning. I mean, you can, at any given time, you can see how many students, what they are learning, which kind of material they are using, at what time of the day they are using the materials. And you can, of course, have a statistics <laughs> on, 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 on each uh, content that students are using. So you can online have all the analytics and then on, on real time, you can repair things if they are need to be repaired. Uh, what we are having here is, this is not complete. We are just on the process of building these courses. Our project started, the project that I'm talking about, at the same time with this project of ours. Uh, we are now have strips which contains uh, the video recording of the class, the PowerPoint, some quiz, and it will be more materials. Each material affiliated to one recording. Actually, it is a, a topic. It's a lecture. If you compare it to face-to-face -to -face learning, students can get in whenever they like. They just click the, uh, the video, and they can say the, see the video. As I told you before, you can see uh, the lecturer using uh, Blackboard or Whiteboard in this case. You can see the, the uh, PowerPoint presentation. In a, uh, you can see if he uh, choose to, to show some, uh, some videos or whatever he does in classroom and it's projected by the Beamer, it's recorded here. And let's go back to the, uh, the, the, okay, and other things. For example, uh, lecture slides. It's uh, on a PDF format. You don't need to download it. It's all already on, on the site. You can just go and, uh, and uh, you can watch the slides. And of course, you have a quiz. Uh, I don't want to take too much of your time because it's already quite late. Uh, you can go inside after uh, watching the content of the lecture, the, the PDF. You can go and make some quiz to assess your learning if you already understood everything also. So I hope at least some of the workshops and, uh, and uh, uh, keynote speech in this project will be also recorded. And maybe we will be also in the framework of this uh, project. We'll establish some LMS and put everything inside. Thank you very much for your attention.